What is up, everyone? Hope everyone is doing well. It is 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, and we are going to get started. People are rolling in, loving the attendance. This is obviously a really important topic for all of us, which is how to navigate uh, this world, this situation, and how to continue to grow uh, our business. Um, in this situation. All of that is going to be covered today, as well as how uh, we can help. A um, bunch of you are clients, so um, we've got some new stuff that we're going to be rolling out next week for all of you, and we open this up to other people um, who are not necessarily with Park Bench because this information just needs to get in the hands of, of everyone. Everyone needs help with their plan. Everyone needs help with their strategy and with knowing, you know, what they can do. So I hope everyone is doing well and let's make sure that we get active in this chat box. I'm going to be asking you questions, getting your thoughts on certain things. So. Let's get started, and I'll do a brief overview on the situation, because there's a lot of people talking about what they think is happening. I think a lot of people are either misinformed, or they're over-exaggerating, um, or they haven't read all the information. Fortunately, I have um, two people in my family. One's an anesthesiologist who is actually currently going through the testing because he was in Britain before he came back to Canada and he's showing signs. So that's my dad. Um, so he is really aware of what's happening because he is going through it. Then my sister um, is a surgeon and so she is you know, on the front lines with the people in the hospitals, working with the people who are staying on top of the situation. Then I also have a whole bunch of staff who are in other parts of the world who are educating me about what's happening where they're at. So I just want to give you guys my perspective on the situation. Obviously, in some parts of the country, North America, Canada, the United States, other parts of the world, it's not the greatest situation. You know, people are being laid off. Businesses are shutting down or going out of business. Some of them are just pausing their business. Everyone in the chat box, what are you experiencing? Not what are you feeling? I want you to write in the chat box what you're experiencing, okay? Not your thoughts on the situation, but things that you're actually experiencing. Because I know some agents I've talked to have talked about how buyers are backing out. Has that happened to you? Have sellers pulled their listings off the market? Or on the flip side, have you done a deal? Have you experienced that people are interested in buying? Have you experienced that people are interested in selling? Okay, what is your actual experience? Not your subjective feeling around it. What is your actual experience? This is what I've been hearing are some of the experiences. Now, the news and the media and what's easy to talk about is all the bad stuff. It's easy to talk about that stuff. It's, it's, you know, clickbaity, it's, it attracts attention. It, it does make us feel good to talk about what is not good because it's almost like venting and relief. But there's a lot of parts of North America. Think about this. There's a lot of parts of North America and the world where business as usual, offices remain open. There are restaurants that are not doing well and there are restaurants that are still open and resume their day-to-day. -day. Now, there's probably a whole lot less handshakes and a whole lot less hugging and more hand washing. But in China, where it started, coronavirus is passing. It is 
almost near done. The, 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 it has moved through like a cold front. It's moved through already. The people who are looking at the science and looking at the data are seeing that is almost done in China. That's a really good sign. There's parts, um, I have a staff member who's in the Middle East and she says, we're back to normal. People are outside, like it's normal again. Okay, so it's not everything is bad. There are some really positives to this and we're gonna go into that, but we're also gonna talk about how to plan for the worst and how to navigate the challenges that we are experiencing, because we are. And the first thing is to manage your expectations around this. Before I get into some strategies today and some tactics, you gotta manage your expectations. Okay, so we have no idea, no one knows how long this is gonna last. We can see movement, we can see improvements in some areas, we can see things getting worse in some areas, we can see areas that are unaffected, we can see types of businesses that are affected, types of businesses that are not affected. No one really knows how long this is gonna last. So don't try to think, okay, this is gonna be over in one to two months. This is gonna be over in two to three months. No one really knows. When you look at your business, your revenue, okay, is gonna probably suffer temporarily. As a business owner, we have to look at the data and look at the big picture. Right now, your revenue will probably suffer. Okay, you may lose some business. You may have started working with buyers, started working with sellers, and you may lose some of them. You may lose all of them. Plan to lose all of them. Plan for your revenue to decrease. And then when you look at the real estate market as a whole, assume home prices will go down. Expect home prices to go down. Here is some of the benefits of what I just said. Who complained in the last, everyone be honest, who complained in prior in 2019, who complained that prices of homes were too high? Who complained the market was getting out of control? Everyone, right? Like it is gonna be easier to sell properties when the price goes down, if the price goes down. If the price goes down, it's because it's needed. That's a benefit. So if prices go down, it's gonna be easier to sell properties. It's gonna be easier to, to, to tell your sellers to pr price reduce. And everyone's complaining, Irene, everyone's complaining. And so, were you a person complaining about the prices being high? And are you now a person complaining that prices are going down? Because that just shows a habit that now is a time to maybe shake. There's a lot of what's happening right now that is going to be character building. Because if you were one to complain or be negative around a situation before, that habit is gonna creep into this situation and if you can manage to not complain and not be negative in this situation, then it'll be easier for you to not do that in the future when other stuff happens, small or big, okay? The other thing that is a positive about this, you know, the internet really came around not so much in the 90s, but really in the 2000s. And what the internet did is it created a lot more information distribution. So there's a lot of learnings that were created from 2008, 2007, 2008, that market crash. There were a lot of learnings that happened in 9-11. In there were a lot of learnings that happened in the dot-com bubble. There were a lot of learnings that happened in natural disasters like Sandy, Harvey, and Katrina. What can we learn from this? So anyone who has gone through those periods and survived and then thrived again, in the chat box, what were some of the keys to surviving and thriving in those times? 
There's also, you know, everyone now is like, I'm working from home. I don't get to meet people so much face to face. Who else has had to do that almost their entire career? Real estate agents who work in second home markets, like vacation rental markets. Okay, real estate agents who work with investors, foreign investors, they always barely talk to their client. They usually do everything over video and Skype and phone calls and use 3D and use AR and virtual reality or whatever tools they use. They're used to it. You should maybe reach out to some of your friends who, are, who have been in those markets and ask them, hey, how do you do business successfully when you don't get to meet people a lot? There's a lot of learnings that can happen. And the internet helps you learn so that you don't have to go through so much trials and tribulations during this time. Okay, and you can spend time talking to agents who have gone through this, those moments successfully. You can talk to agents who, who already are used to dealing with not seeing people as often face to face and have a lot of learnings and you can share it. Okay, so anyone in, the, in our community, I recommend and I would appreciate you sharing your best practices in our local leader group. There's three things that you need to think about as you go through this. I'm gonna go through the story that you tell yourself. I'm gonna go through the state that you're in. And I'm gonna go through the strategies that you can deploy. And within strategies, there are the, there's the principles of how to be successful right now. And then I'll go into daily action steps. Okay, that's what I'm going to cover today as best as I can in the next hour. First is, and this is the most important thing, and some of you have already written about it. The story that you tell yourself. What are you focused on? Are you focused on what you don't have? Are you focused on what you have less of? Are you focused on what you may never get? Are you focused on the bad? Are you focused on what is wrong? Or are you focused on what is good about this? Are you focused on what you can do? and what you do know, and what you do have, and what you can get more of. These are decisions that you need to make on a daily basis. And I recommend this is something that you start out with every day. I wonder if I have my notepads around me. Okay. So like I've created these notepads because I wanted to help ensure that every single day I'm focused on what am I grateful for? What result do I want to achieve today? What tasks do I want to complete today? How do I need to be today? What is good about this moment? What goals are inspiring me and exciting me? What can I do? And who am I? These are some things that at the start of the day, I'm not that big into meditation, um, but I'm, in, I'm big into thinking. I mean, some say that this is meditation. Um, I think a meditation is, is, you know, guided meditation or listening to a certain kind of music and closing your eyes and thinking. Um, my mind runs wild, so I need facilitative thinking. But what are, what's the story that you're telling yourself? What are you focused on? The market probably needs a correction. And while there's lots of challenges right now, there's a lot of business owners who are excited about this time because so many businesses have had their greatest growth happen because of this time. They didn't necessarily grow the most during the time, but they started to do things during the hardship 
that allowed them to exponentially grow once the hardship was over. And that's a big misconception. It's like, you know, everyone says, oh, this is the best time to grow your business right now. It's the best time to set the foundation for hyper growth once this hardship is over. And that's what people talk about. The opportunity right now is because you can make changes and tweaks to your business and you can build a foundation and a pipeline that will burst and cause crazy growth in your business once the hardship is over. And the adversity that we're all facing right now, like this is character building time. It sucks going through it sometimes but if we focus on what skills am I forced to develop right now and what can I enjoy about this journey I can enjoy this journey because I know that I'm going to be better for the rest of my life because of it and and what we do know as much as there's so many people talking doom and gloom look at everything the human race has faced we are a very resilient bunch. We will figure it out. Everything is figure outable. As much as we have to cut certain things, stop certain things, change certain things, okay? Everything is figure outable. Now, that's something that you gotta start with. When you have friends and family and the internet and the media feeding all this negativity because it's great for attention, it can be difficult to focus on what's good. So something that will help you focus on what's good is your state, your physiology. Okay, so every single day you've got to also focus on your mental health, your emotional health, and your physical health. This will help you think and focus on the right things and feel the right emotions so you can survive and thrive during this time. Because I can lay out lots of strategies and tactics of things to do, but if you're not in the right state, if you don't have the energy, and if you aren't focusing on the right things, it's not gonna work. You're gonna get pulled out of it. You're not gonna be able to implement and execute. So be really mindful of the words that you use because the words that you use to describe how you feel, how the market is, how your business is, change the way you are mentally and emotionally healthy. It can either make you more healthy or make you less healthy. Your words are really powerful. Vocabulary can transform your state, positive or negative. Every single day, if you're learning, okay, you're growing and that's gonna make you feel good. Progress and happiness are directly related. So if every single day you are learning, then you are progressing and you'll feel happier and that will help, that energy will carry you for the rest of the day. And I'm gonna talk about how we're gonna be helping you with all this stuff in a sec. You can meditate, you can do these gratitude, this appreciation, but you've got to really spend time on your mental and emotional health right now. Unfortunately, we have a lot of time right now. We have time, we're at home, we have less travel time. Think about all the travel time that you had to do that's now given to you. This is what you have. You have more time in your day to do things because you're not traveling so much. And this allows you to spend time on your mental and emotional health and then your physical health, okay? So make sure you're drinking a lot of water. Stay hydrated. Make sure that you're feeding your body with protein and with your greens, okay? I also, and, and some people may not have the ability to really speak upon this, I have uh, an honors degree in health and that was my previous business, my whole family's in health. So I've studied this, I've been in the business before, so I know the keys, it's really simple. The keys to health are water, protein, and your greens. 
it's really simple. So make sure you have more water, have more protein, have more greens. Whatever else you want to eat because you like it or have some lifestyle or diet or whatever, every single diet in the world includes water, protein, and greens. The other thing that you want to make sure you spend time on, because it will help you with your mental and emotional health, it will help you execute and grow your business, is exercise, fitness. And, and, and the way to measure this is heart rate. Are you building, are, like, there's lots of things, you know, do you want to tear your muscles, you want to do cardio, there, there's lots of tactics. At the end of the day, it's about increasing your heart rate. Your heart rate then leads to sweat. The heart rate is the main thing. Lifting weights leads to your heart rate. Cardio leads to your heart rate. So go outside, go for a walk, go for a run, go for a bike. At home, you could just do three exercises every single day. Push-ups, sit-ups, and squats. You don't need weights. You don't need bands. You don't need anything. You just lie. You just stand up. You squat until you cannot squat anymore. You push ups until you cannot do push ups anymore. And you do sit ups and you cannot do sit ups anymore. That could literally be your entire workout for the day. It will take you five, 10 minutes and you could do it before you start. Okay, you can, you can obviously do more exercise. You can turn up, put on P90X or at home workouts. You can go on YouTube and find some at home workouts. You can make up your own. Do something. Do something to increase your heart rate. Do something to um, push your health forward because you're going to need it right now. And that also means sleep. It is easy to have a hard time sleeping right now. Um, it's the thing that you probably need the most, even though your brain will be like, oh no, sleep less, work more. The thing that you need to help you stay mentally and emotionally healthy and give you energy for all the stuff that you have to do and all the confidence you need to instill upon people and all the energy you need to bring to all your conversations every day, you're going to need your sleep. Okay. Don't sacrifice sleep right now either. Okay. Strategies are the thing that everyone's probably thinking about. And I'm going to get into them now, but what's most important is where's your focus and are your, is your state, are you in a good state physically and emotionally and mentally? Those two things are more important than the strategies to grow your business right now. But obviously you need to do some things to grow your business. So let's talk about it. A lot of you have created business plans in the past they are being thrown out the window and that's okay because i already throw my business plan out the window on a monthly or quarterly basis and i redo it on a monthly or quarterly basis and right now don't think about redoing your entire business plan just worry about what's most important about your business plan, which is understanding how often people are moving right now. That's the most important thing you need to understand right now. How often are people moving? The turnover rate, it's changing right now. And when you know that number, you can change all of your marketing, all of your sales, all of your follow-up, and you can do it in an intelligent way. You have to stay in touch with your turnover rate. Okay, I'll share a video after with everyone on how to calculate it. You basically need to, uh, in short, look at how many total homes have sold in the last month, multiply it by 12, divide it by how many total homes there are to sell, and compare that with how many homes sold actually in the last 12 months, divided by how many total homes sold. Because the market's changing right now. And you should be comparing the numbers when you take one month, multiply it by 12, two months, multiply the last two months, multiply it by six, the last three months, multiply it by uh, uh, four, and the last 12 months. Because the last three months are where everything started to really start to move and change. And you want to compare the numbers 
to see how the market's moving and how you need to adjust, how many people you need to talk to, how many people you need to prospect, how many people you need in your database, and how much you need to do of everything else you're doing for your business. Everyone's probably doing something different. The turnover rate is the key to success with anything that you're doing. Because if people are moving less, which they probably are, you need to do more of everything, but you need to figure out how much more. You also need to be more of a scientist right now, and you need to track and record your progress. Whatever it is that you're doing to grow your business, you need to track and record your progress to be like, okay, I did these activities and I got this result. Because the amount of activities you did to get a result is changing compared to what it used to be. So you need to stay on top of how many times you need to do something, whether it be calling, emails, uh, DMing, print marketing, lead generation, or whatever kind you're doing, how many of that thing are you doing before you get a result? You need to stay on top of those numbers. Okay, again, I'm going to be talking about, because obviously I got to do a high level today, and, and um, for everyone who's in the Park Bench community, I'm going to talk about how on a daily basis we're going to help you do all of this. I'm really excited about these new things that we are doing to make sure we are continuing to thrive in this time and separate ourselves. Thanks, Matt, for sharing that. Okay. You need to look at your CRM and your database. This is the best time. People are at home. People are at home more than ever. Their phone is beside them more than ever. And you have the opportunity to connect with your database more than ever. But you need to organize your database. You need to make sure you're using your CRM. And if you don't have a CRM, okay, um, Matt maybe can share someone, I'll share something after with some of our, our advice for CRMs that you can use. At the same time, a spreadsheet still works for the majority of people. It's not as effective in some ways, but a spreadsheet still works for most people. You just need to be, make sure you need to get all your contacts in one place. You need to organize your contacts. You need to add more information about all your contacts. And the way you do that is by talking to them and staying up to date with what's going on with everyone in your database. When it comes to sales and marketing, advertising, okay, buying leads is going to work less than ever. Advertising to get people to call you is going to work less than ever because people who don't know you are less likely to want to talk to you or work with you and be face to face with you. We as, we as a society became very comfortable with strangers over the last couple decades because of the internet. And that's a good thing and it will get back to that. But right now, we are distancing ourselves from our family. We are distancing ourselves even more from our friends, even more from our acquaintances, and strangers we pretty much don't want to deal with right now. That's how people are thinking. That's how I'm thinking. So advertising, which was a way to connect with strangers, is working less right now. So I would try to cut all of your advertising. Now, when it comes to relationship-based marketing, referral-based marketing, that you need to continue. That is where the business is going to come from. Every single realtor who has survived and thrived any hard moment in the economy or in the real estate market has had a great brand and a great database with high-quality relationships. I have been doing this for working with realtors for almost a decade now, and I've talked with people who have been doing real estate for decades, and working with, I think I've worked with over 4,000, 5,000 agents over the last eight years, and I always ask questions, and one of my favorite ones is when times are bad, what creates success? And it's brand, and it's relationships. That's it. So you need to continue relationship and referral-based marketing. And you guys are also fortunate to have Park Bench. It is an asset for you to build new relationships, 
nurture relationships, add more value to relationships, and build your brand as the local market expert. And if there's anything else that you can think of, as we'll talk about, that's relationship and referral based, when, when, when the coaches and, and gurus out there, you know, Gary Vee and Grant Cardone are saying like, keep, the time, now is the time to expand. Okay, when, when there's people out there saying, Tony Robbins as well, like, when, you know, when winter is here, it's not even coming, it's here. Um, it is a time to expand. When they say that, it's a time to expand your relationships. It's a time to expand your database. It's a, a, a time to expand your brand. That's what it's a time for. The other thing that you might want to be looking at adjusting is your scripts and your templates. Okay? When you're talking to people, the scripts that you used to say to people might need to be tweaked right now. Changes need to be made. What you say to people may need to change. Look at the scripts and templates you have and see if they're appropriate for this time. Because there's an opportunity to check in with people and see how they're doing and see if they need help thinking through whether to buy, sell, or invest. Because that is what's happening right now. People are like, I know 2007, 2008 taught us and the internet knows there are opportunities right now. People are in their head thinking about there's opportunity, where is it? Where is the opportunity? And real estate is definitely on a lot of people's minds right now. Whether they need to sell their house, whether they need to buy, whether they need to invest. For a lot of people, they don't. For a lot of people, they do not need to do it right now. They're unable to do it right now. But they need help thinking that through. And if you can be the person that helps people think through whether to buy, sell, invest, or hold, when it comes to real estate, when times change, who are they going to want to think through what to do next with? A person they've never thought it through with before or a person they have thought it through with? So don't talk to people as if, let me help you buy, sell, and invest. It's all about let me help you think through it. I don't care if you don't do business now or for the next five, 10 years. I just want to help you think through it so you can make the decision and move on. So you can make the right decision and move on because we all have a lot of things to think about. And that's what you can do for people right now. Okay. There are three things that you need to, to, uh, to develop right now. Okay. You need to plan and prepare. And there's three things you need to develop. Cash flow. You need to develop cash flow. You need to develop your brand and you need to develop your pipeline, aka your database, because that's what that is. It is a pipeline of business. This is the opportunity. I'll get to that in a sec. Let's first talk about cash flow. Okay. Look at all your expenses, live under your means. Live under your means. No one is going to care if you're not keeping up with the Joneses anymore. What a great time to not have to buy things that you kind of unfortunately were buying because you had to keep up with the Joneses because that made you feel good. And that's a, a flaw in humans, but it is a real thing. And now you don't have to. If you don't buy new clothes and you don't um, eat out at nice restaurants and have great Instagram pics from things happening in your life, that's okay right now. So it's easier to live under your means because there's no social pressures to living like a bum. Okay? Focus on cash and profit. Do not care about revenue. Don't care about awards right now. Uh, Sequoia. The number one venture capital firm in the world invested in the biggest companies that we all know, Facebook and Uber and all these things. They have told all their companies, I don't care about growth. I care about cash and profit. They've never cared about cash and profit. They've cared about spending cash, being unprofitable, and growing. 
And even they are saying, don't worry about growth, worry about cash and profit. That's what small businesses need to worry about. That's what you and I need to worry about, cash and profit. Who cares about revenue? Cash and profit. Who cares about winning the President's Club or top 1%? Or what? Forget all that stuff. Cash and profit. If you have assets in your life that are sucking cash, uh, sucking cash out of you, get rid of them. Advertising sucks cash out of you. It's not an asset. There are things that you have to pay for that are assets, that are relationship and referral-based assets. You want to keep on to the assets that can help you produce cash flow, that don't keep sucking money from you, but you make an investment. That's why rental properties are great right now. I am looking to find rental properties. I am happy that park bench that i have this business because i know that this is an asset for all of you to build your business right now you've already paid for it, you already got it this is an asset for you to leverage right now and then what are assets that can help you create content I'm happy that I bought this because this is going to help me create content because that is going to help me build my business. And we'll talk about strategies right now. You're at home. There's lots of ways to create content. And that's some of the best things that you can do right now to build your business. So what are some cash flow producing assets you may want to keep them and invest in them and you want to sell and cut any cash flow sucking assets that don't help you produce more and they're not guaranteed to produce more okay brand development so cash flow development number one number two branding development this is a great time to start to establish your brand to instill your brand to strengthen your brand and when i say that i just mean the words and phrases that people think about and feel when they hear and see your name. This is a really great time to become the local market expert, to become someone that everyone knows, likes, trusts, and wants to support now and in the future. This is a great time to become a person that people like talking to. There's a lot of people that people do not like talking to right now because they are making their situation worse. They're making them feel more scared, more fearful, more doubtful, more worried. People need to surround themselves with positive, pleasing, fun, confident people. This is your time to develop a brand that makes people go, he's great to be around. He is great to talk to. She is, helps me be more positive. This is a great time to develop this, and that will last. This is, this is why businesses are able to grow, use this time for growth for the next decade, because that's what this time is. This is for building a foundation for the next decade of growth. This is a great time to build that brand that will last for the next decade, okay? So how can you do this? Always ask yourself, not what should I do, what do I need to do, don't ask those questions. The reason why, and there's slight variations to that versus what can I do? How can I do this? Versus what should I do? What do I need to do? The difference in those questions, although they may appear to be similar, is one of them implies there's one answer. And there's never one answer. There's lots of answers. There's lots of solutions. So in get in the habit of asking yourself, how can I do something? What can I do? Okay, versus what should I or do I? So we're going to talk about creating more content in a sec because the spread of coronavirus or COVID-19 is boosting digital media consumption. Are you also experiencing that? You're, you're consuming more digital media. You're spending more time 
on social media and on blogs and on YouTube and podcasts, you're spending more time on these things. The world is spending more time on these things. So let's take advantage of that. This is a great time for you to become the local leader and the digital mayor. Okay, that, the, the reason why is because, you know, the mayor can only do so much in person because he now can't even do anything. The prime minister in Canada is in his house. There's only so much that people can do in their house. So everyone's going digital. So you can be a digital leader and you can be a local leader. You can be the leader for your community. That's what this was all about. And now is a better time. It is like this time was made for Park Bench. For everyone who is a part of this, who is doing, getting out, not getting out in their community anymore, who is helping the local businesses, helping people stay up to date with what's going on around them. It, it was like this time was meant for us to rise up and step up and put in that extra effort to be a leader for our community because we will get rewarded for the next decade when we do this. It's expect our revenue to be down right now and, and that allows us time to build the brand and the database to make us very successful over the next decade. Okay. When people ask you, how are you? How do you respond? Is it, well, you know, is it, oh man, not, not good. Some, some of us are pretty good at being the, uh, not doing the, oh, not good right now. A lot of us get comfortable being like, well, you know, it's going. How about, res how about responding with, I'm good, I'm growing, I'm learning. It, this is a terrific time to rethink how I'm running my business and how I'm living my life. What is your response? Because your response, people will mirror and match that. And what do you want? You want people to be positive with you. You want people to be optimistic. You want people to give you energy. You need to give it first. You need to give the positivity first. You need to promote the positive. You need to promote the good. You need to make positivity louder. Okay, so questions that you can ask people to make them more positive and bring their energy up is what's good? Tell me what's good. How can I help? How are you? And try to help them focus on what's good. The other thing that you need to think about is the tonality that you have with people. Okay, are you, is your tone making them feel uncertain or is your tone making them feel certain? Is your tone making people feel that you don't know what's going on or make people feel that you do know what's going on, that you have a plan? Is your tone making people feel like, oh my God, we're in this massive crisis or, hey, you know, this is no big deal. We'll get through this. Is your tone being empathetic and sympathetic to the issues that people are facing or is it, you know, really close-minded to people who don't think like you? Are you being curious? Is your tone expressing curiosity and interest in other people or is it focusing on yourself? What's your body language? This is a time to develop these skills. Is your body language about being open? If you want people to open up to you about what's going on in their life and how you can help them and, and where they're at in, in thinking through their real estate, or is your body closed and then it's gonna make it difficult for them to open up? If you want people to open up, you gotta be open. And if you want people to move fast and help you navigate this quickly, you need to move fast and you need to move with strength. Okay, people will mirror and match you or you will mirror and match them. Take control, take responsibility and make sure your body language, your tonality and your words are what you need and what you want to have other people mimic and match and mirror.
pull other people up right now and that will develop a brand for yourself that you pull people up and people want to talk to you people want to be around you and that will be good for the rest of your career okay the third thing you got to focus on cash you got to focus on your um your brand and right now is a perfect time to focus on your pipeline the pipeline may not burst now it may not burst next week but it will burst your database may not buy and sell right now but it will at some point and the bigger it is the better you will be so real estate is a lag business you all should know that okay people are buyers are holding off sellers are holding off but the pipeline can be building for you or for your competition it's one of the two because it will burst and it will rebound and it will react at some point in the future and you need to focus on every day i'm either getting new clients closing the transactions i have or i'm building a pipeline it's one of the two or three okay if you cannot get more market share when people talk about um now is a great time for market share it's easy to be like what are you talking about like i can't get any transactions right now what about changing the definition of market share to relationships you can build your market share right now in your local area when you think about it on a relationship level it is the perfect time to build your market share of relationships to increase your relationships compared to your competition to be the number one ranked realtor in the mind of the people in your community compared to everyone else who's are you how many people are you number one for how many people want to support you these are the things that you can build market share on and that means building your database and that means nurturing your database now is a great time to check in on people and add information about them to your crm people are in conversation mode and people would prefer to be in conversation with people that make them feel good than watching the news and reading the news so you can now nurture all these relationships learn more about where they're at what they're doing what their future is their hobbies their interests all this information because we've talked about it in the past the more you know about people the more you're able to add value you can't add value to your database if you don't understand what they do what they need what they like their hobbies their interests where they're in their life their pets their fa- their kids what's happening with their family everything you can have really great conversations just to catch up with a lot of people to add a bunch of information about them to your database so that you can find more ways to add value to them focus on relationships not transactions the transactions will come and there's a whole bunch of things that you cannot control when it comes to getting transactions right now but you can control building your brand and building your pipeline okay so let's talk about some daily action steps i'm going to wrap up with some things that we'll be doing um, for you moving forward some new initiatives that we are putting in place to help you execute all the things i'm talking about right today i wanted to talk about the principles of success and what we need to focus on and then in the future we're going to help you now get and take action here are some things that you can be doing okay whether you work with us or not these are some things that i recommend that you do that you can do obviously you can't get out in the community and meet people face to face as much some of you can and some of you feel fine doing that and that's great i'm not here to tell you whether you should or should not do that um or can and cannot do that because you all are in different markets you all have different situations so i'm not here to say whether you can or cannot get out in your community and see people face to face but the metric that we should all be focusing on the metric you should all be increasing on a daily basis is conversations you are all listen to this you are you are all one conversation away from your next client you don't know how many conversations it's going to take to get that next client to get that next referral 
because the market is changing and, 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 and there's so much, so many things impacting everything, but you were all one conversation away. And so every single day you should be chasing conversation and tracking how many people did I have conversations with today? And here's a goal that you can set, set for yourself every single day to make yourself feel good every single day. Do one more today than yesterday. Okay, at Park Bench, we talk about PBs, right? Play on words, because Park Bench, PB, it also stands for personal best. Every day, you should shoot to achieve a personal best every day. You should try to have a personal best in the number of conversations you're having every single day. Now, the conversations can be happening on the phone. They can be happening over email. They can be happening over social media direct message. They can be happening over text. They can be happening over FaceTime. How many conversations are you having? Because here's the beauty. If you're in conversation with more people, another thing to track and measure is how many people am I in conversation with? Because as soon as someone becomes aware that they are looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, they're going to be thinking about the realtor they're in conversation with that they like and trust. So the more people that you're in conversation with, the more likely you are to get future business. So how many conversations are you having on a daily basis? How many people are you starting a conversation with on a daily basis? Track and record that and increase it every single day. Number two, what can you do right now that will move your business forward? Help and serve the local business. Local businesses are really struggling. The storefronts, the brick and mortar, they are really struggling. And while their business may be closed, the business owner is not closed. The business owner is at home trying to figure out what to do right now. The business owner is coming up with new products. The business owner is coming up with new services. The business owner is willing to offer deals, sales, specials. The business owner wants more people to get to know them right now, and they don't have money to do it. You can help. You all have this platform to help. You all have the ability to help. And while you cannot do face-to-face -face interviews, you can do phone interviews. This is how I started it. I didn't do video face-to-face -face interviews when I first started. I did phone interviews, and it worked. You can do phone interviews. You can do Zoom interviews. I do them on YouTube. Diane, I did, them with, I did one with you. You can do video interviews. You can do phone interviews. You should not stop interviewing. You should in increase the number of interviews because you have the time and the capacity because you're at home, and you have less other things to do. You're not doing so much advertising. You're not doing so much travel. You're not working with so many clients. So you have more time to interview and feature the people who need to be featured right now, who need to let people know what's happening with their business and the changes that they're making in their business. Who here has struggled to get deals, sales, and specials on their Park Bench website? You're going to have a whole lot less struggle right now doing it because what boomed in 2008, 2009? Groupon. That's when that business was born and became a billion dollar business overnight. Deals, sales, and specials are going up. Discounting is going up. And you have the best free local platform to do it on. You should be aggressively trying to help businesses promote their deals or sales or specials because they're more open than, than ever to do it right now. And they've got new products and services and they're like, well, you can't visit my restaurant or my food business, but I will deliver it for you. Here's information on how to, do, how to deliver it. Who else can you help? Homeowners need help. And what homeowners need help with is they need stay, to stay up to date with what's going on. Okay, they need to stay up to date with what's going on. Find your official public health sources. Everyone's got different public health sources. Not, not for-profit media. 
okay, there are certified official sources of information. This is what my parents, my dad and my sister are just re, re, you know, hounding on me. Where are you getting your information from, Grant? Because the health industry is going here. Dr. Tan and the public health sources. There's people who are specializing in this issue right now. That's the information we need to be consuming. Not what CNN and ABC and Fox and whatever um, swear word type of media source is out there who's leveraging this time to make money. There are people who are not in it for the money who are trying to educate people of what's going on. You should be a leader for your homeowners and help deliver that information through email newsletter and through social media. You can be a local leader in all deaf sense of the word, okay? You can also be keeping people up to date with the market. You know, in the past, people are like, I don't wanna know about the real estate market all the time. Like we had to be a little hesitant about updating people about the market. Right now, you don't really have to hesitate keeping people up to date with the real estate market because homeowners are like, what the heck is happening with my house value? What the heck is happening in the market? They are thinking about this more than ever. So what a great time to, on a weekly basis, have an email newsletter that educates people about the market because it's changing real fast and about properties for sale. And every single day you can make one post about the market, one post about a property for sale, and you could be doing Facebook Lives, okay? So here's what I recommend on a, and I'll, and I'll repeat this. Um, I'll summarize it in a different way in a sec, okay? You can be educating homeowners about the real estate market and properties for sale and what the pricing is, is going for. You can educate people about what's happening with COVID-19 and the new official updates, okay? Be the unbiased, unprofitable media source because that is what people are trusting. When you talk to homeowners, don't ask if they're looking to buy, sell, or invest. Don't ask if they know anyone who's looking to buy, sell, or invest. Ask them if they need help thinking through whether they need to do it or not. And ask them if they, need, if they know anyone who needs help thinking it through. And that you wanna consult as many people as possible what they, should be doing based on their situation. It's not about getting business, it's about help being the expert and helping people think it through. Okay, so write this down. Daily, this is what I recommend that you do, daily action steps. You need to daily review your strategy for the day because things happen daily right now. The world's moving real quick. So every day you should strategize and time block at the beginning of your day. Every day you should be thinking, hey, how can I enhance my skills? Because if I'm learning in the morning, I'm gonna feel good about progressing as a person, as a professional, and that's gonna make me feel good for the rest of the day. Who can I call, text, email, and DM on social media? Who in my database can I add value to? Every day, add value to my database. Every day, book interviews. Every day, do interviews. Every day, post on social media. Every day, ask people if they need help figuring out if or when they should buy and sell and what they should be looking at. I gave that feedback to my agents right now where I'm at. I said, listen, you guys are really smart, but I need you to be a guide for me right now because there's so many opportunities. There's so many options. I need a guide right now. You need to be a guide for as many people as possible. And when you think about how many calls, texts, emails, how many interviews you book, how many interviews you do, how many posts you make on social media, how many people you're in conversation with, how many new people you start conversation with, there's all these metrics, pick one of them. If you wanna go be more aggressive, maybe pick a couple, but try to look at all of them and say, I'm gonna do a PB today. I'm gonna have a personal best in one of these areas today. What's the area I wanna have a personal best in? Because if you're just doing one more of something every single day, you will grow your business and you'll put yourself in a really great position as everything starts to materialize and soften and as we get through this. Because we are getting through this. It's already moving through like a cold front. It's just moving through. 
okay? Every week, okay, so that's daily, every week, email newsletter, Facebook Live. And it's the same thing. The email newsletter is an email of what's happening in the area, what's happening in the real estate market, what's happening with properties for sale, what's happening with COVID-19. And, and the Facebook Live is just a Facebook Live of what's in that email. So you're killing two birds with one stone. Okay, technologies. You've got Zoom. I'm on Zoom right now. Zoom has amazing free options and it's a really great service to do your video interviews. If you want to transcribe your video interviews or if you want to transcribe an audio file for free to be able to quickly do written interviews, okay, Otter and who's got kids who are not in school anymore? Okay, leverage your family, leverage your kids, okay? Social media, do it manually, okay? Email newsletter service. Your CRM might have the ability to send out email newsletters every week. And if you don't, our favorites are exact contact, bomb bomb, get response, constant contact, MailChimp. Okay. Those are our favorite brands. Um, really great value for email newsletters. Exact contact also has a CRM in there too. Okay. Now I'm going to get through how Parkbench can help. Okay. So listen up and we're almost done starting on monday we are going to be launching a follow-up accelerator so who here has been a part of our accelerators already where it's a combination of learning and doing it's an hour block of time where there's a little bit of learning but a whole lot of doing and on Monday, we're launching our first follow-up accelerator where if you plug into it, you know that during this hour, I'm going to be following up with my database because that's what I need to do. And you're, I'm going to be learning campaigns and strategies and scripts and templates on how to do it. And I'm going to have time to go do it. And I'm going to be in a community who is live with me doing it as well. And that's going to help me do it. And if I have questions, I'll re be able to reach out to people and in that session and be able to do it. Okay. Thanks, Crystal. Okay. So Crystal is doing the Park Bench Accelerator, which is kind of um, a little bit of everything. The follow-up accelerator is an hour block of time every single day to follow up. We are also going to be launching a database building accelerator because you're gonna need more people to follow up with. So we're gonna have a database building accelerator where we're gonna be laser focused on booking interviews, doing interviews. And we can all do it from the comfort of our desk and computer and phone. So we're gonna have an hour block of time every single day to build our database, an hour block of time every single day to follow up with our database. Now you may do more than that, but at least you're gonna do an hour of each and then the third thing that we're launching on Monday is skill mastery. So I talked about how you need to develop your skills. And right now, the most important skill is sales and prospecting, is making sure that we're building our pipeline, building our database, and that we're do, create, creating sales opportunities. And we're learning how to talk, how to write, um, and how to create content so we can do sales and prospecting. So an hour every single day on sales and prospecting. Okay, that's also going to be launching on Monday. And it's going to be one after the other. So you can go and attend all three where we're going to start with skills because that's going to make us feel good and empowered. Then we're going to lead into building our database because we know we need to do that and build our pipeline. And then we're going to lead right into follow up with our database that we have in that moment. And we're going to flow through it hour after hour after hour. And we're going to be having what I'm calling GTD sprints, getting things done sprints. There's a few things that we all need to kind of just get done. And they take usually about a week, an hour a day for a week to kind of get done. And that is to clean up our database. That's the first thing that we're going to be doing on Monday, cleaning up our database and organizing it because we need to be able to do that to be able to follow up and we need to be able to do that to be able to add more value, okay? So those four 
sessions are happening on Monday, one after the other, after the other, after the other, and that's gonna start your day and then carry you through the rest of the day. We also have, as you may know, we also have daily sessions on top of this. Okay, we've already been doing this, but in case you forget, we have daily sessions on lead list creation, on how to book interviews, because maybe you don't want to plug into the session or you miss one of them and you just need a refresher on how to book it, how to do it, how to use the website, how to do video editing on a Mac, how to do video editing on a PC, how to write a blog, how to do SEO, how to promote your interviews. Now that we're talking about email newsletters, we're adding, so we've already had those sessions before, how to make a lead list, how to book it, how to do it, how to edit the videos, how to do the blogs and write the content and how to promote them. Those will be one-off sessions you can just kind of plug in at different times of the day to go attend, to just get a refresher on some of the skills. And then we're also gonna be adding two new sessions in, how to create email newsletters with whatever service you're using, how, and, and, and by having that block of time every single week, because that's all you'll need, one hour every week to create a weekly newsletter for your database that's got all the information that I talked about earlier. We're gonna make sure that you have a block of time every week devoted to doing it, and a block of time to doing the Facebook Live and doing all the social media posts. Okay, so I talked about what you can do, and we're gonna have a whole bunch of sessions to be there with you in the trenches, live, helping you do all of this. Because I know and I feel that's what you all want and need, okay? If you're not a part of the Park Bench community, Okay, um, we're coming up with some ways to make it easier for people to get a part of this. Because if you're not a part of our community, um, we're gonna make it easier. So someone in the chat box is gonna write the link that you can go to that if you're not a local leader with Parkbench, if you're not a Parkbench client and you wanna get all this, right? So all this stuff is for Parkbench clients. Um, that you guys all just get for free. You've already made the investment. You're already doing this. Okay. Um, someone please type it in the chat box. I can't transfer it from my phone to my computer. Um, let me, uh, let me just get the link. Okay. Okay. So, all of this training and all of this support to help you do the work that you need to do to grow your business right now, this is for people who are in our community. Those are ideas I share with you, but if you know that you wanna be able to get help doing this, all of this and get the community to keep you accountable to doing all of this, um, then you gotta join our community and there's a link in the chat box right now so you can inquire to learn more about it. Okay, but for all my park ventures, Here's some other things that are on my mind right now. Um, what guest speakers uh, should we bring and, and that you may wanna learn from and listen to? If you have any ideas, put that in the chat box. And number two, the other thing I'm thinking about right now, which is really out of the box, um, more revenue streams for you as entrepreneurs. Because when you are a leader of your community, when you're an influencer, when you're a connector, when you have all these relationships, when you have this big database, when you have this brand and this reputation in your community that everyone knows you, likes you, and trusts you, and wants to support you, and wants to listen to you, and feels comfortable and confident with you, which is what you are creating when you do all these things, you can add new revenue streams to your business because there's a lot of companies who want to get access to the people in your community. And I'm looking at partnerships right now with things that I think are important at this time in society that can help homeowners and help local businesses. And you might be able to bring this to your market and like an affiliate, um, make some money because of it. This is some of the things that I'm thinking about and I've, and I've had companies come to me um, asking about this. The other thing that we're thinking about, because right now the world needs a local leader in every neighborhood. Like that is, this is the perfect time for our community right now. 
with what we do for everyone and what we do for the businesses and the homeowners, this is the perfect time right now. And we need, every community needs someone like you. And I've been playing around with a, a regional leader concept where it's almost like being a franchisee of Park Bench to help us grow in those markets. And then that becomes a other income opportunity for you. The other thing that's happening right now, as you know, is if you know anyone who is interested in joining our community, you can refer them, okay? They can get um, a free trial and then you get 50 bucks towards a budget for your business and you get 50, bu 50 bucks towards a budget for your community. And originally we talked about helping the homeless, but right now we may wanna redistribute that money and help people and help the COVID situation in your area. The other thing for your business, if you need video equipment, if you need um, a stuff for your business, that budget will be there for you, okay? As always, you can call in, you can email in, you can live chat, we got the support. So if you need help with any of this, outside of all of our sessions, plug in, okay? So if you're not a local leader with us, okay, go to the link in the chat box right now or just say, you know, I'm interested in joining because I want to get access to all this training. If you're a client, stay tuned for the emails about um, all the training that's coming up, all the things I talked about. Remember, this is what you can do right now. You can have more conversations every single day. That should be your goal. More conversations, more dialogue every day, more service every day. How many people can you help a day? How many people can you serve a day? The interviews is a way to do that. Creating content is a way to do that. And how can you be cash flow positive? Okay, try not to sell your stocks in your house. Try maybe refinance um, stuff because you may not want to, to sell your house right now. Um, and if you have cash flow and you want, are able to look at investments that can increase cash flow, that might be a good idea. Okay, but it's all about being cash flow positive, being of service, and hyper communicating. Building your database, nurturing your data database, developing your brand, and getting better at your job. That's what we want to help you with. That's what you need to do right now. Here's what you cannot do. Okay? Nothing. You cannot do nothing. It is easy to, to sit back and, and wait it out. But here's the thing, if you don't take action, fears, doubts, and worries will build. Fear and action cannot live in the same room. So if you have fear, doubts, and worries, that is your cue to take more action. And here's what you also cannot do. You cannot do the same thing, okay? This is a new world. This is a new economy. What worked before this does not work now okay you cannot do the same things you will not get the same results right now you have to do some new things my recommendation is you still commit to expansion maybe not expansion of i'm trying to spend money on advertising to get clients and make more money i'm trying to expand my market share of relationships i'm trying to expand my database i'm trying to expand my brand i'm trying to expand my value I'm trying to expand my content. That's what you can expand right now. And that will lead to more business. There's a lot of moments as you go through this where it's gonna be mentally tough. Nothing great, and we all wanna strive for greatness, nothing great was achieved without enthusiasm. So you've got to persist with enthusiasm. And you got to remember that events like this, they may lower your revenue. They may lower your savings. They may take away some of your clients. They may force you to get rid of some of your assets. But they cannot take away the person you become and the person you are. And in fact, they can help you build 
the person that you need to be for the future. That's what this time is great for. So be more than a realtor right now. Don't focus on being a realtor. Be more than a realtor. Be a local leader. Lead by example. And stay tuned as we help you be a leader and be an example. If you guys have any questions, put them in the chat box. Otherwise, sorry for being a little bit over time, but I wanted to get through all this information. Um, and I'll answer any questions. Okay. Colleen says, hey, what's that uh, enthusiasm? Nothing great was ever achieved, ever, without enthusiasm. Persist through this time with enthusiasm. That's helped me a lot in my life. Thank you, Will. It is, it is rough in a lot of places. It's not rough everywhere. It's rough in a lot of places. And again, what's good about that? What's good about it being tough? What's good about housing prices going down? What's good about people having struggles? This is your time to serve. People will remember how you make them feel and how you try to help them. And they'll remember that forever. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Irene. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate your time so much. Um, I hope I gave you some ideas and I got you excited about what we're going to be doing over the next month to make sure that we expand and grow in this time. Todd, awesome. Welcome to the Park Bench family. Lori, Lori Cooney, what's up? It is a unique opportunity. Thank you, Linda, absolutely. Okay, we can either make excuses or we can make money. We can either grow or we can die. I choose to make money and, and, and grow. And although I'm not maybe making money as much money right now, I know that the stuff that we're doing, the stuff that you can do will allow you to make money over the next decade. Because that's what we were here. We're here to live a life and have a career, have a business, and it's not one month or two months. This thing is a cold front. It's gonna flow through. It's gonna be cold and uncomfortable and inconvenient, but it is gonna pass. And we need to be the person giving up the jackets and helping people out. Diane, I will let you know uh, the times on Monday, but anyone who wants to know right now what it is, okay, so here's gonna be the schedule. Great question, Diane, I am so sorry, I forgot this. Here's the schedule, okay, for next week, okay? 10 a.m. Eastern which means I'm up early at 7 a.m. Pacific because that's where I'm at, but know what? Who cares, okay? What else do I gotta do? Let's get up and number one thing we're gonna focus on is eat that frog and we're gonna get stuff done. We're gonna work on our database and our CRM. That's first, that's the first project that we all gotta work on is clean up our database and strategize looking at our database focus on who we need to add to that database, what information we need to gather from people for our database, and how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna database management. Then we're gonna focus on our skills. At 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, we're gonna focus on our sales and prospecting skills. Then after that, at 12 p.m., 9 a.m., we're gonna focus on building our database. And at 1 p.m., Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, we're gonna focus on following up with our database. And for the rest of the day, you're either gonna have interviews to build your database, or you're gonna do more follow-up because you're gonna to wanna to have more conversations, or you're gonna have clients to work with, 
or you're going to have some other stuff going on in your business and your life. Okay, but your morning is yours. Okay, I'll, I'll send an email out to everyone with the schedule. But that's it right there. Trish, do you have any a list of suggested products to start a podcast? Yes. Okay, uh, Trish, if you go to, um, it's either on that blog or it's on this blog that I wrote. Um, I definitely wrote how to stuff you need for a podcast how to start a podcast um getting started for beginners here we go trish if you are still here check out that link hold on let me put it in the chat box boom check out that link If you're still there, Trish, there's a bunch of blogs on that link. Um, there's a couple of them um, for podcasts, or one of them for how to get started with a podcast. Another one from some other podcasts you can listen to to get some ideas for. And that's something that we talk about in our training sessions. You absolutely can create a podcast right now to keep people up to date with what's going on. Okay. The, the YouTube show for your interviews can be the same as your podcast, can be the same as your blog. And it can be all about the community, which is going to really help you build your brand as the go-to local realtor. All right, any other questions? If not, let's get to work. I got another meeting in eight minutes. Appointment setting software. Oh, no, not that one. My Zoom just always keeps. Uh, Calendly, there we go. Thank you, Matt. Uh, that's my favorite one. Now, cash flow, right? Okay, you can open up your Google, Google's free, Google Calendar, iCal, you can just do it manually. Um, if you really, if, if you are fine making the investment, having a calendar or software, um, go for it. But at the same time, you can just, when you book interviews and book meetings, you say, hey, what's your email? I'll send you a calendar invite. Awesome. Log into your Google and your phone and just send the calendar invite and away you go. Okay. Focus on cash flow, right? There are some things that are nice to have versus need to have. We got to really strip down the need to haves, or sorry, the nice to haves, the wants, strip those away and keep the needs. Keep what you need. Really reflect on what you need versus what is nice. Thank you, Kristen, from Calgary, YYC. I was just there last week. Any other questions, put it in the chat box. If not, I'm just gonna quickly scroll through the chat to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, headphones and microphones, okay. So the Blue Yeti, is my favorite value microphone jabra which i'm using right now um is a really good company for headsets um if you like bluetooth wireless and really good noise canceling um we have literally tested out i think like dozens of headsets in my life literally dozens like stupid amounts okay plantronics like my parents are unhappy how much I spend on headsets, trying to figure it out. Plantronics. Uh, 
really also good headset for if it's noisy, right? Like all my sales team, we have used these ones because this microphone is really good at canceling noise if there's lots of noise around you. Um, these ones are good corded ones and a little bit cheaper. Carmelita, there will be a replay. Oh, thank God I recorded it. Oh, I almost freaked out and thought I didn't record it. <laughs> Linda's having a good laugh. See, we all freak out a little bit when we all of a sudden go, oh my God, did I just remember to do that? Yes, we did this. We recorded it. Thank God. All right. We recorded it, so I'll send out the replay to everyone uh, via email. Thanks so much. I got to go. Have yourself a great day. Let's get to work. Let's be leaders of our community, and let's focus on what's good right now because there's a lot to be grateful for, appreciative of, and there's a lot of opportunity and good that is happening in this situation. We just need to look for it, and we need to take action upon it. See you later.